Okay, this is the display. Cable runs down here, down here, and this is the connector from the current display. Okay, all right. Now, what I'm gonna to try to do is plug into this connector here, which is the one that goes into the back of the motor. It's having a hard time focusing on that, but anyway, I think you see. So that little cable goes into the bottom of the motor, and basically I'm gonna try to make a little um, little adapter that goes into there, rather than pulling the motor apart. Some people want to get into the motor and splice into the wires, and then pull this connector in back into the motor. So you've actually you can run two different connectors. Um, I'm, I'm going to be happy just to just to plug into this one. All right. Okay, guys. So just that you're made aware, the LCD does come with the long extension cable, and it's quite uh, long enough so that it, you can get into the motor. This is the end that it comes with. Now, because of that Y adapter that I had, that um, that didn't really have all the cables running through it. I've actually managed to pull the end apart and I'm going to try to wire the end of this connector to this connector here which um, which hopefully will then fit into or plug into the bottom of the motor. So this is what the connector looks like um, once you put it all together. So what I'd just do is maybe um, you know attach the wires onto there, put some hot glue on there and just put a bit of heat shrink over the top and then that should be able to plug into the uh, motor connector and get my LCD3 running. Okay, here we are back with the Norco and the TSDZ2. As you can see, I've uh, replaced my VLCD5 with the KT LCD3. To be honest, um, I think the VLCD5 looks a little bit nicer, but anyway, it's just my opinion. So routing the cable uh, with the extension cable through here, that's just going to attach to the bottom of the frame here and run down here. And I've already connected it up to the motor. Again, I made up a special plug so I didn't have to pull the motor apart. Okay, now I've also unplugged the um, speed sensor and I have connected up the ST link to the motor side of the speed sensor and we're going to try to program. Okay, so let's plug that in. Okay, I just plugged it in, I've fired up the same software. Now, Casino, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, but he told me to configure this for the X6. Okay, so I did mention that the uh, controller should be flashed with the X4, but Casino wants me to flash it with the X6 to do a force flash. Apparently, um, the X6 holds more memory or something like that. Look, I'm just gonna try what he says and um, if I stuff up, I guess I stuff up. All right, first I will try reading everything. Um, I think this one's read all tabs. Yep. Okay, so it has, even though I've got it on the X6, it has managed to read everything. And I have made a backup of the program tab and the data memory tab. Um, not the option byte, but I will uh, save that as well. Save as. I'll just call it option and save that hex file. Okay, now I'm going to load the firmware. Oh, before I do, I need to switch tabs, don't I? So I'm going to go back to the program memory tab and I'm going to load the latest version of the firmware, which is currently um, 0.2. Okay, so we'll go in there to that folder, look for the hex file, and it is, uh, let me have a look, 
There it is. TSD Z2 flexible firmware 0.2 hex. Okay, this may change, so just make sure you're always flashing with the latest version. So I'm just going to open that up and I'm going to just write that. I'm going to write the current tab. Alrighty. Program memory successfully verified, which is a good sign. All right, uh, let's disconnect. And I'm going to plug this in back into the motor. And I'm going to try, try to uh, and plug the power back in. And then I'm going to try to fire up the motor and we'll see how it goes. So give me a sec. Let's have a look what's going to happen. Um, okay, I'm assuming you press the on button. Hmm, you know, that's not what I was expecting to see. Uh, I was expecting to see something different. Let's have a look at if any of the buttons do anything. No. Okay. Hmm, okay, so that tells me that possibly my LCD cable isn't working properly or I haven't flashed properly so back to the drawing board guys I will let you know what happens okay guys so just um, rightly or wrongly I've decided just to swap the RX and TX wires in the back of the controller because I just did such a great job of soldering my connector on it's going to be really hard to pull that apart so just following this wire um, we're looking at these this green and this yellow that need to be swapped over now hopefully i can get to the back of that it's not really um, a lot of room there as you can see the wires are soldered onto the board and you can't really pull that board away any further but we may be able to get there and just swap those two over. Okay, hope it works. Okay, so wish me luck. I've plugged the speed sensor back in. I have plugged the KT LCD3 back in. And this time I've just got it sitting right here. And plug the battery back in again. Alright, so we're just going to try turning this thing on. Fingers crossed everyone. Ooh, that. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is cool. Hey, dude, this is cool. Okay, we have some buttons here we can play with. Ooh, yes. Oh my God, this is working. Yeehaw. Now I know why it's flashing. It's because I haven't set up the number of cells. So just reading the instructions there, I think I needed to press both the top and bottom buttons together okay now this does something um, I don't know what it does but you know what next session we will be setting up the uh, LCD okay stay tuned for that one thank you